Hey, Louis Anderson here. You're listening to Jim and, but what is it? John and Rick. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Our special guest today is a gentleman and stand-up comedian who burst on the scene even before his first appearance on The Tonight Show in 1984 and instantly became a fan favorite. He went on to create the animated series Life with Louie, which won him two daytime Emmys. He is a published author and was host of The Family Feud. He's also a winner of a Primetime Emmy Award for his performance as Christine Baskets on the FX television program Baskets. And John and I are thrilled to announce that he'll be at the Frauenthal Center Friday night and that he is here to join us. Welcome aboard, Louie Anderson. John and Rick, what's up? I'm sure, what a nice introduction. I think every day should start like that. You know, you, you, you get a nice introduction like that. Coming down the hall, my father of 37 years. Sometimes mean to my mother. Most times a pain in the ass, but still, my father. <laughs> Let's hear it for him. He's going to work again today at the hardware store. <laughs> you know, what we'll do is we'll send you an MP3, and then every time you're like, oh, I got to get up this morning, you can just pop that up and, <laughs> and play that. And... I would just love that. I would just love an MP3 that I could play as I'm walking into any room. <laughs> <laughs> A little Here fanfare, is. little Tchaikovsky. Uh, fan favorite in 1984 on the Tonight Show. <laughs> I just love that intro. I cannot tell you how much fun that intro was for me. And you know what you can do? You can use that if you can can't get a good reservation at a restaurant, too. Just play it in the background. Hold sure. on, I'm working on my intro. Right. Well, why don't you tell me what you think of it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, a lot of folks may realize that you came from a very large family. How much of a role have your parents and that built-in cast of siblings played in both your approach to life and to comedy? Well, you know, in life, you tend to be a loner when you've grown up in a family of 11 because you have never had your own bathroom. <laughs> you've never had any of your own clothes. You've never had any of your own things. They're all hands. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Privacy becomes a big thing. But in that way, but also, you know, having that many siblings, you get a ch chance to deal with all those different personalities. So, you know, it kind of gives you a, a taste of what life would be like. And it gives you a false... Uh, idea also about how families are because people will say to me what was it like to grow up grow up in such a large family and i go well i don't know i mean it was the only i don't know i yeah. guess it was my it was a nightmare but it was a great <laughs> nightmare you know what i mean and i you know and i think i make them i made the most out of it i think i shared it with people in a way that was you know pretty honest you know really that it wasn't all uh you know it was, like people always say, it was, you know, it wasn't all roses. It was more like all guns and roses. Right. And, um, you know, it's that kind of, a, I like when I get, that's a brand new joke I just made up. I feel that you, you set me up to make up a great joke, but isn't that good? People say life is a, well, what is the real saying? Um, a bed of roses, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah. People say life is a bed of roses. Well, I say life in my family was like guns and roses. And... <laughs> I, I love it. That's what I love about comedy, making up jokes. Sure. I mean, what's more fun than the fact that intro thing? I'm going to do that intro thing. <laughs> I am going to make that intro thing a routine because life should have an intro when you walk into the room. I just realized that. Yeah. So I just love, I, that's what I love about comedy and I love about you. I love all those those uh, things you put, you know, in the intro, all those things are high points of my life in, in a lot of ways and accomplishments that, you know, a kid from the projects of St. Paul, Minnesota, really got very lucky. You know, Louie, how much, um, a lot of times, the comedian, I mean, uh, being funny is a, a self-defense mechanism. I mean, either you're a fighter or you can make people laugh. How much of that growing up for you was uh, just, you know, uh, a self-defense mechanism? I think, you know, probably in my family and then being a fat kid. Yeah. I think, you know, I was the first one to make a joke about myself so that the uh, bully or whoever it was to make the joke, you know, wouldn't make it. And so I think that that I, I think that had a lot to do with it. I, I, I do think that's common with comics. I think that they are, are constantly writing that monologue they're going to tell later in life. And those experiences, you know, and, and I definitely I definitely think that was true. I think it was a big part of it. 
you're obviously excellent at observing quirks of human nature, and you derive some of your comedy from that. After observing yet another slice of life that you can talk about in your act, do you ever find yourself shaking your head and saying, oh, God bless you for being so stupid? <laughs> yeah. I, I, well, I, I mean, I think I just pointed it out. I never realized how stubborn I am. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I'll be, I'll be positive of something, and then I'll be, I'll be found out. You know, that's what Google has done to all of us who think we know something. Hmm. You know, yeah. you think, oh, no, that, that, that's the name of that place there. No, it's not. <laughs> and you're just convinced it is. And I think my favorite thing are people. I mean, you're not going to get better than that. You guys must have it yourself right. constantly in, in the business you're in. I mean, it, the, the calls you get, the listeners, the guests you have. You just can't write that stuff. Life, life writes itself, and if you're observing it, you can um, make bank on it, I guess. Well, we're on air. We pay a lot of attention to daily news stories. I always have a statement every morning, thank God for people from Florida. I mean, 90% <laughs> yeah. of the bizarre stories seem to come out of that state, and you're like, oh, hallelujah, if it wasn't for them, I'd have no material. <laughs> yeah, isn't that the truth? Yeah. It's, uh, it's a diverse it's, uh, you know, I think it's the drain of the U.S. Um, you know, it all circles down there. <laughs> I like going down to Florida because of the sun. You know, I got Minnesota. I want to get warm. Right. <laughs> hey, what's this orange thing in the sky, right? Hey, <laughs> one thing that, that, that I do like about your act, too, is it, it's a clean act. I mean, you know, so many times, especially today, I mean, the F-bombs are flying, and that's all a lot of comedians do. I mean, it's just, it's swear and swear and swear. I mean, I always admire the folks that are able to, to be funny and, uh, and, and not drop the F bombs. Is that, was that a conscious effort on your part or how did that all come about? You know, I think it was, you know what? I think somebody told me once a guy named Roman DeCare, a guy who worked with a really sweet comic, uh, God rest his soul. And he said to me, um, he said, Louie, if you do an act that's about your family and is clean, you'll become successful in no time. Mm. And um, for some reason, it resonated with me. And also, you know, a lot of times my mom and my family would come to my show, and I just, you know, I never felt comfortable throwing the F-bomb out there with my mom sitting there, you know? <laughs> right. But right. also, you know, it just didn't fit me. You know, if it fit me as a person, sure, to, to do it, because I think we all have to have freedom of speech and do it. You know how some people the F-bomb fits? Right, and right. Some people it just doesn't. Sure, shock to hear it out of you know. Right, and so I think that that you know that had a lot to do with it. I think that I tried to do comedy that made me feel like uh, comfortable, still you know feel like that was who I was. You know, your your dad comes across in your act as kind of this no nonsense, almost maybe like a hard ass type a guy. What kind of relationship did you have with with your dad? You know, I think I had that relationship with him. He was a hard ass. He always he was grumpy. He was, uh, of course, an alcoholic, so, uh, you know, he went through those those things that were rough. But, you know, even when he quit drinking, he was like, ah, I don't like that guy. I go, Dad, you don't even know me. He goes, I don't have to know someone not to like him, Louie. Yeah. You know, <laughs> he would just say that kind of stuff. I go, and then that turned out to be a routine because I go, you know, Dad, you know, you know, somebody will walk in and go, I hate that guy. I go, Dad, you don't even know him. I don't need to know him to hate him. <laughs> you, know? you, just, you know, it's just so, it was absurd, you know. But I, I used that and softened them up. You know, my first joke I told about my dad was, my dad never hit us, he carried a gun. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and he never shot it, he just go click, click, you know? <laughs> Pretty and effective. I got such a big laugh from that joke, I go, oh my God, there's material here about my dad. Right. And so I started to, I started to honestly, you know, like, mine this material, mom, dad, sister, brother. And there was so much there, and then there was just, you know, it was, it's it's like they're always with me too so yeah. there's, a, there's a bittersweet thing in that too i would think that you know that audiences react so positively to those parts of the routine because perhaps they themselves have had some pretty similar circumstances yeah you know it's amazing you know life with louis was in 18 countries mm -hmm. and i have mm -hmm. like three or four hundred thousand fans on life with louis facebook that are from poland and turkey and russia and you know, Romania, 
and they they had similar experiences with their dad because that that show was translated in into that language. And I'm always amazed when I'll look, you know, they'll write me uh, from their Facebook, and I'll go on their Facebook, and they'll have because they'll have like the Packers. A Packers hat on. Yeah, mm. <laughs> and I'll go, and I'll go. That's from my cartoon. There's no Packers in the in Romania, right? There's no Packers fan. And that and my cartoon, we did the Bears and we did the Packers in a game that the Dad and Louie went to. And I just laugh at how what an effect that cartoon had, and how much I still get letters every day and uh, emails from people. Uh, from Romania, Poland, mm. Turkey, Russia, who are huge Life with Louis fans. And so that is true. That that material from my family resonated on a, on a really high level. John and I have a question, just for completely selfish reasons, because we both have an item on our bucket list that you've already gotten to try, and that's to compete in the World Series of Poker main event. Mm-hmm. Please tell us about that experience. Everybody thinks they're a really good poker player. Of course. And, you know, I'm a pretty good poker player, but I get bored. Yeah, that's a long time to sit there. And then you just, eventually you go all in because you're hungry. (laughs) 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 You always think you have a good hand. I, you know, I think that, you know, just like I think the whole idea behind poker, I had a great experience, first of all. There were twelve or fourteen hundred players to begin with. Yeah, I lasted like I think I lasted like twelve hours or something mm. like that, and I just felt like you know you don't know until you're in it how much pressure you probably put on yourself and how you know how fast it keeps going and you know you think you have a good hand and then you get crushed and then you're out and you have to do that horrible push back from the table. <laughs> You know, yeah. uh, yeah. hey, uh, hey, thanks, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing worse than, than losing, than thinking, you know, riding high, thinking you're winning, and then go, ah, everybody, I'm so, I'm so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's exactly what would happen to us. Hey, tell us about big underwear. Well,. I, uh, they're giant, first of all. <laughs> and, uh, no, but one day, honestly, I was folding my underwear and, cause you know, you're on the road and you need clean underwear and you don't want people doing your underwear. <laughs> no. Watching this. No, no, you, cause they'll try them on. Yeah. Know, they and, <laughs> or they'll um, steal it. Hey, look, I stole Louis Anderson's underwear. Louis Anderson's under- hey, look at Everybody get in. <laughs> um, um, and I realized, I didn't realize how big my underwear were. And then I just started laughing. And then I realized growing up, I didn't have very many pair of underwear because we were so poor, you know? Yeah. And so when I cleaned out my storage, I found four big boxes of underwear I had been hoarding. <laughs> and no one wants them, by the way. You can't even give them away. <laughs> I took them to Goodwill and they shamed me. They go, we don't, we can't, that's not sanitary, Louie. <laughs> <laughs> I go, well, <laughs> they're not dirty. They're all clean. Well, we can't take them. <laughs> so, so I got them in the car, so if you know anybody. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's embarrassing is um, if you try to donate them and they don't realize at first that they're underwear. <laughs> <laughs> That's really true. That's kind of what happened, actually. I almost left them right in the goodwill there, but then I said, oh, that's a bad story. Louis leaves us up there. <laughs> <laughs> and you say that's the name of your new comedy special. Yeah, that'll be out on uh, Netflix and I think DirecTV coming up. And um, so I'm going to do a bunch of the material from there. I'm really excited about it. It's my sixth or seventh special, and uh, I'm going to do a, a bunch of my family stuff, which I always do, and, you know, talk about baskets and uh and my new book coming out, Hey Mom, and I'm really excited about all that stuff. Hey Mom, the book dot com if people want to go and find out about it. Well, on behalf of everyone in West Michigan, we could not be yeah. more tickled that you're coming to the Frauenthal Center Friday night. Tickets twenty nine to forty nine dollars. They can be purchased at the box office via phone at seven two seven eighty oh one. You can call Star Tickets or certainly buy them online at StarTickets.com. 
Louis Anderson, you've always been a treasure, and we're so glad that you'll yeah. be in our hemisphere. You've been to the Fraunfeld before, haven't you? You know, I can't remember. I think so, but, you know, everything is, uh, at a certain age, everything is like, yeah, was I there? <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. Like, I always think it's funny as a... I'll walk in a place and go, I never played here, and then I'll see a poster I signed on the wall. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's the Kremlin, you really don't remember. <laughs> Too well. You know what's amazing is the older I get, how right I think I am, but how wrong I really am. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I will stick to the, yeah, I was never here. I know where I've been. It, Boom, there's the poster. Yeah. Oh, sure. damn it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Hey, uh, when you talk about traveling, the good news is it isn't some woman standing on the sidewalk holding a baby saying, oh, yeah, you've been here. <laughs> 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 oh my God! That I, I just had such a you know wonderful thing, and I'll never forget my intro. <laughs> as long as I live. <laughs> oh, this has been an absolute treat. We've been looking forward to this, and we hope that Miss Geegan treats you equally well. Yeah. Thanks so much, you guys. Take care. Huh? Bye, Louis. Thanks, Louis. Be safe. <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs>